YouTube, what's going on? This is your boy Jordan JC back again on the Chicago Bears Breeze. And we got a good one today. Topic is going to be about if Ryan Pohl sees the success of this team as they are currently standing four and two right now in a heavy and aggressive and competitive NFC North, the best division in the league, as we see now. Does Ryan Pohl's jump at the big fish? Does he get aggressive and go all in this year by perhaps going after? One of two of the best edge rushers that could be on the market with their teams kind of slumping and falling off record wise. That is Max Crosby from the Raiders and obviously Miles Garrett from the Cleveland Browns. Or does he not get aggressive and maybe address defensive end a little bit more with maybe a player that was just recently waived from the team that will be facing in week eight, the Washington Commanders in Jamin Davis, who was a first round talent but just hasn't been realized and hasn't lived up to, to his potential. Do we go after a small fish, a cheaper, uh, obviously, pickup in that in that, in that that instance? Well, let's talk about it. Let's go over the stats because, of course, if we go the route of, let's just say, we do want to keep our draft picks and we don't want to touch anything going into next year or the following year because, obviously, there's a deficiency of, at offensive line. And we, don't want to, we want to make sure that we keep all of those picks to address that deficiency. We've seen Ryan Poles. You've heard him go to certain college games this year and look at the talent that's out there from offensive line to defensive end uh, 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 in college. And, and clearly he's doing his homework and research to address this issue coming up next year. But when you have some names out there, I mean, just like it, it, it's almost as if like when LeBron was on the market, you can't not pay attention to, to the fact that you have some superstar potential talent out there that could be up for grabs because both of their teams are not doing so well uh, rank-wise, or rather uh, uh, record-wise. And that is Miles Garrett and Max Crosby. And so let's just go over some of the numbers. If you're talking about going the route of getting someone like a Jamin Davis who just was waived from this Washington Commanders, he was a 2021 first-round pick. Here's his total numbers after three years of being in the league. 269 tackles, he has seven sacks, an interception, two forced fumbles, and two fumble recoveries. Now, you, you're probably saying to yourself, those are, are not good gaudy numbers at all, right? You know, this is a guy who has not found his footing in the NFL. Uh, he came in as a linebacker, uh, that off, off line, offside linebacker, and, and he hasn't really lived up to his potential. Uh, I believe uh, uh, he was tried in at defensive end as well, and, and you know, there there was a, an experiment there that, that just didn't bode well for him. And so, they just said, you know what, we're going to waive him. And, and apparently that maybe there's more there there, there to that story than uh, we're, we're seeing because, you know, if, if Ron Rivera, who he was one of his draft picks initially, if they couldn't get any value or any trade back value for him to the point where they had to waive this guy, maybe there isn't teams out there that are interested. But I just saw him as a name that could be interesting because, I mean, you're talking about somebody who's still 25 years old, who still – has all of the quote unquote freaky traits that you want to or, or see in a player that you could develop. And you know, always here's here's what's always the case when it comes to you know one man's uh, or one team's trash that can turn into another team's treasure. There's always a team that always believes that they can tap into some sort of of of, of unknown potential or untapped potential in a player. See, so you know what? Our development team is better than the one that he came from. You know, we have the players around him that can kind of coach him up. And I believe with us having one of the better defenses in the league, a player like Jamin Davis can come in and thrive in a role. You saw that, in, in, by example, in Darrell Taylor. Coming out of Seattle, you saw the numbers year after year. Very good numbers when it comes to sacks and creating pressure from that defensive end spot. But uh, apparently in Seattle, he just he just didn't fit the scheme. But coming here, he made an Im immediate impact. When you talk about the, the the rush win rate and the pressure that he's putting on quarterbacks, the amount of sacks he's had in his role, he's doing exactly what we thought he would do coming here. And so that was a fine. And so maybe that's the same thing that you could get in a mold of a Jamin Davis is this young guy still has so many more years ahead of him uh, if he chooses to continue out his, his career 
that you you look at those traits, you look at this at the intangibles and the the the, the potential in a player like Jamin Davids and say, you know what, we can bring him in and surround him with, you know, one of the better defensive minds in Matt Eberflus and Eric Washington. You you look at their track record, I believe that they can actually bring something out of Jamin Davis that hasn't been tapped into. And so there's a name there. And of course, it wouldn't cost anything because he was waived. And so you bring a guy like that in at least to try, it wouldn't hurt. You're talking about an elite defense already. This is a name that I feel like can be overlooked that we could bring in and potentially he can contribute to this team because we're talking about just how special the depth on, on this defensive line is from the Javon Dexters to the, the the Andrew Billings to Chris Williams to Demarcus Walker, Darrell Taylor, Austin Booker. I mean, you can put him right in that fold, and I feel like he can thrive. That's what I believe. Now, here's the question. Does Ryan Post go that route, or does he go all in and try to get a Max Crosby or Miles Garrett. Now, obviously, as Bears fans, we're excited to hear those two names. We know that those are two of the top edge rushers, probably one and two, if we're being honest. We know Nick Bosa's up there, too. But if you're talking about the guys that make an immediate impact that are, are will, will destroy quarterbacks on a weekly basis, that just get pressure, uh, 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 snap in and snap out, those are two of the better names in the league, obviously. Just to go over the numbers again, Max Crosby is 27 years. I actually didn't realize Max Crosby was still that young. He's still in his prime, or rather going into his prime at 27 years old, kind of like how we got when Khalil Mack came to the Bears. 32 total tackles on the season, six and a half sacks. And uh, you look at the team that he's on, obviously the Las Vegas Raiders wouldn't really say that they're playing for anything. They're last in the AFC West at two and five. You saw that they just traded Devontae Adams, uh, to the Jets to pair back up with his his buddy and Aaron Rodgers. And so this is a team that's probably looking to maybe just haul off some of their better talent so they can receive a lot of draft capital back. And what do the Bears have? Well, they have a lot of draft capital. They have, obviously, their first-round picks back. They have two second-round picks because of the pick uh, from Carolina. And that Carolina pick, as of right now, is, I believe, the second pick in the second round. And so that's a very high second-round pick. And so when you package that for Max Crosby, are you willing to do that? And that's the real question is, are you willing to go that route to just make this defense, which is already elite, just completely unbearable and just completely unblockable on the defensive line? When you're thinking about the potential of a Max Crosby uh, on the other side of a Montez Sweat, and then you got big Billings that's really pressuring up the middle, that stop gap, and then Javon Dexter that's coming into his own. I mean, that could be a special, special defensive line. But you're taking a risk because at the same time, you're saying we're not going to address the deficiencies in offensive line coming up in, in next year's draft. And so maybe Ryan Post has to go a different route of looking to free agency and picking up somebody, you know, when it comes to protection. And so that's the caveat is wh where do you go? Do you go all in and say, you know what, we have the team now. The Bears team have, has proven enough to Ryan Post to say we're going all in now. We're, we're special of a, we're special enough of a team now where we're, we want to uh, uh, bring in a Max Crosby that clearly will make a huge impact and probably can push us over the edge to us not only being a playoff contender but being a Super Bowl contender. It's a, it's a, it's an amazing thing to think about. Another reason why there's also I believe that you want to at least get into the conversation of you know uh, uh, dealing for Max Crosby because there's also rumors. That ever since Aiden Hutchinson went down for the Lions, obviously the Lions star pass rusher, there's been interest in sources saying that maybe they look for getting Max Crosby because you already know that the, uh, the Detroit Lions uh, have the team and are in a position to go all in. They were one game away from the Super Bowl, and so adding a player like the ilk of Max Crosby could really take them over the top, especially with the way that they're playing Obviously, we know that, you know, we're all Bears fans, but giving kudos and giving their flowers to the way they're playing. The running game is all is working on all cylinders. Jared Goff is looking like an MVP of the league with his efficiency. I mean, the man barely misses any throws. It, it's utterly ridiculous. His passer rating as an efficiency is on another level. And so, you know, you 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 bring a guy like that into that team. They could they they could be almost unstoppable as well. And so do you play keep away if you're Ryan Pose? So there's a twofold way of, of, of getting this done. You you bring this Max, Max Crosby onto this team, and you're also keeping him away from a division rival. And so there's a lot of things to think about with that. Of course, Max Crosby, his track record, I mean, it, it's, 
it speaks for itself. Last couple of years, the man has killed when it comes to total tackles. For a defensive end, I mean, it's insane the numbers that he's put up. 2023, 125 total tackles, 14 and a half sacks. 2022, 120 total tackles, 12 and a half sacks. And so you're talking about that constant uh, 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 production at, a, at an elite level. That's the type of player that you would want on this team if you're willing to push, push all of your chips in to the middle of the table. Now, here's another player that you could push all of your chips into the middle of the table. Let's say you you lost out on a Max Crosby. Well, there's another team in the Cleveland Browns that are completely imploding and exploding at the same time with this season in the AFC uh, 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 North. Their record is one in six, completely lost on the season, especially with the news that Deshaun Watson has gone down with a, a season-ending injury, which is unfortunate. We know that Miles Garrett obviously wants to win. The Cleveland Browns have had issues within their team with injury for a while now. Nick Chubb just had uh, uh, just returned from his injury, but we know that the, the, the injury issues with that team has kind of plagued them year after year. And so maybe a Miles Garrett is is available to a team like that. That's saying, you know what? Maybe it's time to kind of re regroup and and retool this team, or not even retool, but actually revamp this team and go into rebuild mode. And so, Miles Garrett, clearly one of the better, if not the best pass rushers in the league. Like I said, these guys probably are one and two when it comes to the best edge rushers. Only 28 years old. Here's his numbers for this year. 17 total tackles, four sacks. So, I mean, the sacks are not necessarily up there, but, I mean, you already know what Miles Garrett brings to the, to your team. You're talking about a athletic freak from 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 head to toe, the dude looks like he will completely destroy an offensive line by himself. And you're talking about the pressure that he puts on the quarterback, whether it be quarterback hits, whether it be pass deflections, he can do it all on that defensive line. And again, just dreaming about a pairing of him and Montez Sweat. Oh my goodness, that's utterly ridiculous. Along with Dexter and Billings on the inside again as he's starting four. One can dream, but it also can be a reality. Here's his also uh, uh, his last six years. He's had double digit sacks. He hasn't gone under ten in his last six years. That is impressive. And in twenty one and in twenty two, two thousand twenty one and two thousand twenty two, he had sixteen sacks in back to back seasons. And so again, that is the production that you want from your defensive end, and that is the one thing that we're technically lacking if we're talking about. That guy on the other side of Montez Sweat, we appreciate and we love the fact that, you know, Darrell Taylor is getting in there time to time. Demarcus Walker is having an impact and an influence on, on pressuring and getting to the quarterback from time to time. But anytime you have a name like Miles Garrett that's on the market or that could be potentially on the market because the team is probably going in the direction of rebuilding, you got to listen. You got to at least have make, make those phone calls. We know Ryan Pose has had at least a history of being aggressive enough to go after the big fish. So again, this is a question of whether or not does he go all in on this guy and what will it take to get him? Clearly, we know that that will probably take our first round pick, our second round pick, possibly Carolinas. And so again, the question on the table for you all, I want to get you guys opinion. Do you all think that it's better to get one of these guys or do we go the cheaper route? Maybe take an experiment on Jamin Davis or somebody else that is out there that is going the cheaper route or do we stay pat and we say, you know what, let's just address everything that we need to in the offensive line next year. It's amazing times for Bears fans. Bear down, baby. I think that, I honestly, in my opinion, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm going to go all in. I would love to get Max Crosby or Miles Garrett and, and just kind of solidify just how special this defense is because, in my opinion, the time is now. I feel like you have to get – the best version of this defense together now. And with everybody possibly coming back healthy and recovering after the bye week with Jaquan Brisker and Kyla Gordon and coming uh, back and kind of getting back on the men, Tariq Stevens and also coming back uh, uh, possibly as well. You know, having big names like this added to this team already, I just think that that would make this defense just a completely special. And I feel like the time to attack is now. And so, Want to get you guys' thoughts on this. Do you think that we should go after these big fish, or do you think that we need to stand pat and address the protection uh, in next year's draft? Or do we take a chance on a guy like Jamin Davis, who was just waived, had the potential, first-round pick, 19th overall, I believe, in 2021? And so do we take a fly on that and just trust in the development process? Do we trust in our, our, our coaches and our leaders on this team on the defensive side? And, and go that route. Or do we just stand pat and say, you know what, we already have the team as is, we're good. 
Want to get you guys' thoughts as always. I'll be down there with you as always. And as always, show some class on this video. Comment, like, and subscribe. Share this video with others. See you guys on the next Bears Breeze.